And all 
And then there is what's called church apostasy. That is the church choosing no longer to obey fundamental teachings of the Bible. And then, as I kept meditating on the word and reading the Bible, I came to realize that there is national apostasy. That is, when a country, its government, makes a clear decision not to follow anything in the Bible. In other words, Christians become particularly persecuted in that country. Newsflash! China is rewriting your Bible. In case you didn't know, they're rewriting your Bible. They're extracting things in the Bible. They're taking things out that they don't like. Mm. So China is adversarial to fundamental Christian principles. So there is national apostasy. Today, we're going to look at national apostasy. If you want to find out where we were in personal apostasy, then go to YouTube on the Kingdom of Managers in the UK and find personal apostasy. One. And then there's apostasy two. And now we're looking at part three. But let us pray. Those are excerpts. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your name because you are our Lord. You are the only true and living God. You are worthy to be praised. You are the magnificent God. You are the only true God. Your name is Yahweh. We honor you today and we give you thanks. We bind every principality and powers. We bind every prince and power of the air operating in this region and the region where you are. We take authority over every demonic force. We bind every rulers of darkness. We bind hmm, every demonic prince ruling over the airways. We enforce the kingdom of God. We enforce the word of God. We lift up the banner of Jesus. May your kingdom come. May your kingdom will be done in our lives. Let your name be magnified. Father, we release Michael, the chief archangel, to destroy every agent of darkness that may seek to hinder, to stop the flow of the message of salvation. We bind the God of this world that has blinded your eyes to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, let your name be praised. Mm. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be magnified. Father, we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, stand by for our sermon intro.
Okay, now let's get into the word. We've got some work to do. Now, before we embark on our Bible teaching for today, um, I'm going to endeavor to tell you what the mind of Christ is at the moment, prophetically. Mm. While I was preparing this, I did some additional reading that I want to add to what we are teaching for the day. I'm going to go to Amos chapter 1. Sorry, Amos chapter 7. <clears throat> and I'm going to read from verse 7. Amos 7, verse 7 to 8. Thus he showed me, this is the prophet Amos, and behold, the Lord was standing by a vertical wall with a plumb line in his hand. The Lord said to me, What do you see, Amos? And I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am about to put a plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. I will spare them no longer. Now this is within the context of Israel at the time, Amos, the prophet, was assigned to give a word to Israel. Now, why is this specifically applied to Israel at the time where Israel were? Now, of course, you know there are different types of prophets. There are pre exilic prophets, the prophets that spoke while Israel was in exile. Then there were prophets that spoke to Israel when they came out of exile. So they are pre exilic prophets and post exile prophets before exile and after exile so that's the context in which the prophets spoke in the New Testament however the picture of God's heart to Israel then to the church now as a cherub now remember that the church is a spiritual Israel the church is the prince of God it's a spiritual Israel so modern day Israel is a picture of the church now Amos is saying that there is a plumb line he saw in a vision a man standing by the wall with a measuring rod and he stood by the wall and he said I I'm about to put a plumb line in the midst of my people. I'm saying this word prophetically to the church today. That the church is a modern day picture of Israel. And there is a plumb line placed in the church. In other words, there is a standard in place. There is a demarcation between what's righteous and what is unrighteous. What's holy and what is unholy. Now, today I'm taking the liberty to address the United Kingdom Church. I'm addressing church leaders in England. I'm talking to pastors, senior pastors. I'm talking to elders. I'm talking to bishops. I'm talking to apostles. I'm talking to you from your Bible. So, he, the word of the Lord. I have put a plumb line in the midst of my people. Now, the United Kingdom Church is not without guilt you are not guiltless you are guilty of a lot of things now you flow people in from america you have a care of duty under the law you have a duty of care to protect the young people in your church you have a duty of care to protect your congregants now i am bewildered i am confused i am lacking understanding as to where your level of discernment is. You tell us young men in your church that you can't join certain departments because you have to be born again before you can just be a partner of a particular department. You tell us that we need to be in your church for a certain period of time before you can join particular departments. So you seem to have a plumb line. You have a standard in place that you think people should be 
you need letters of transfer from different churches before we join your church. But I'm calling you out today as a hypocrite. You are not following the plumb line. You have one standard for UK believers and another standard of apostasy where the church becomes apostate and there is national apostasy. So, let's continue with the message for today. If we're praying for a revival, we've got to look within us and start changing things. Now, maybe this is what the church needs to become one. Maybe this is what the church needs. A, a, an absolute, you know, a cleaning out so we can have a reset and a restart. Maybe this is what it needs. Maybe this is what's going to kickstart a revival. So the remnant can be separated, so the wheat can be separated from the chaff. I think this is what God is doing, maybe. He, 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 he's, he's, he's exposing things. He's cleaning things out. So we can have a fresh start. You didn't educate me. You didn't send me to school. So you can't stop me from talking. Let's stand up and do something for the kingdom of God. We, the United Kingdom, we, 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 we produced, as it were, the, 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 the Gothenburg Press to print the King James Bible. Not America. With due respect to America, we know what righteousness is. So let's set the standard and follow it. Please, I'm imploring to you, church leaders, let's do something for the kingdom of God without interference from some foreign entity. We have enough professional people here. Please, I'm asking you, and I'm depending on you, to follow what the Bible has been teaching. And stop lowering your standard. It's becoming an embarrassment now. Please, I'm asking you. Thank you very much. So now we're going to continue on our teaching on apostasy. Now as I hinted earlier, apostasy is a willful turning away from the faith. Apostasy is willful disobedience willful disobedience to the fundamental teaching of the Christian faith. Now let's look at some Bible scriptures. Now some of these scriptures are specifically focused on personal apostasy. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 says, For if we go on sinning willfully, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Hebrews 6 verse 6 Then having fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance, since they again crucify to themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. Jeremiah 2 verse 19 Your own wickedness will correct you. So our conscience knows the difference between right and wrong. It says, and your apostasies will reprove you. Some translation says waywardness or disobedience or willful disobedience. And your apostasies will reprove you. Know therefore and see that it is evil 
and bitter for you to forsake the Lord your God. And the dread of me is not in you. So we have lost the fear of God, is what Jeremiah is saying. The fear of God must be restored in order for us to live a life free of apostasy. Psalm 70 and not be like the fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation that did not prepare its heart this is speaking here of Israel when they came out of the wilderness or while they were in the wilderness and whose spirit was not faithful to God hmm. so he's speaking here the psalmist of us having a faithful heart a heart that doesn't meander a heart that doesn't lean to one dimension and then sway to another dimension of truth a heart that's constant a heart that's consistent that doesn't willfully disobey the teaching of the Bible. So after receiving the knowledge of truth, you then now question the truth for which you have been taught. You might remember St. Paul. St. Paul says to Timothy, be instant in season. Make full proof of your ministry. Reprove, he says, rebuke. Mm, reprove and rebuke, rebuke, uh, to correct, to, to bring about change. But this people, Jeremiah 5, but this people has a stubborn and rebellious heart. So there's rebellion in the church now. Mm? There is stubbornness in the church. There's a difference between I have sinned and I'm asking God to forgive me of my sins than saying, my sin than not repenting of your sin because you think it's okay to live that way you have accepted sin as a lifestyle that's a big difference they have turned aside and they have departed jeremiah chapter 5 verse 23 so they've because they have accepted a particular lifestyle they have stubbornly pursued and rebelliously pursued a particular lifestyle and this lifestyle of rebellion to fundamental Christian truths has made them turn away and depart from the faith is willful willful sin Jeremiah 8 and verse 5 says, When they, why then has this people, why has this people turned away to continual apostasy? They hold fast to their deceit, their deception. They refuse to return. So, the person, the individual has set about to accept a particular lifestyle of sin and is crept into their life, is crept into the church and the church has accepted it as it's okay. Hebrews 6 and verse 4 says, For in this case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit. 
For in this case, those who were once enlightened, they tasted of the heavenly gift. They were partakers of the Holy Spirit, but now they have turned away. So they have become wayward. They have become complacent. And their complacency has destroy them because at one time they believed in the faith but now they have betrayed their own faith because they have now decided to follow another faith Psalm 18 David speaks about his relationship with God. And he says to the forward, God treats them forward. To the merciful, God is merciful. But to those who are forward, so it's amazing how all of us have a different relationship with God based upon how we choose to either submit to God. So one person sees God as harsh. Another person sees God as loving. You see, depending on the life that you and I live. If I live a life of repentance and I continue to walk in the tenets of the Bible, I see God as a loving father. But someone else who is always disobeying God, he says, as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. It's possible for you and I to have the same father but have a different experience. Two children can be in a home and have a very different experience from their parents. One is always being rebuked and told off, and another child might well be congratulated. It's not because the child is necessarily a favorite. When I was first a believer, I thought God taught everyone the same. He does not. Every Christian has a different experience based on their relationship with God. One Christian spends time, spends their time fasting and praying and evangelizing. That believer will not have the same experience as someone who always in the movies, always in social media, doesn't pray, doesn't read their Bible, doesn't go to church regularly, doesn't believe in paying their tithe, the Bible says, whatever a man sows, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he shall reap. Two students can be in a classroom. One gets A and the other student fails. Same teacher, same material. What went wrong? One was obedient, one was diligent, one went home to read it to study, the other went home to play and watch television. Will they have the same results in the exam? I beg to differ, they will not. Because one chose the part of waywardness and the other chose the part of obedience. So not all Christians have the same experience with God. Not all believers have the same experience with God. Some have turned away from the faith. There are apostate churches today, still functioning apostate Christians today. Why would God ask me to teach this? I have never had a lecture on apostasy. So I had to do a lot of work just to do this. So clearly, and this was two months ago. I didn't start this teaching this week or last week. The first broadcast on apostasy was a re-upload. I deleted it and I re-uploaded it again. 
in obedience to what the Holy Spirit told me to do. So clearly this message is relevant. This message is pertinent to the body of Christ now. So David in Psalm 18 tells us that I have kept the ways of the Lord. He says, I have not wickedly departed from my God. Now that is in perfect correlation to the text in Hebrews where it says, if you have a sinful heart of disobedience, let us not have a sinful heart of disobedience to turn away from the living God. Oops. So it's possible to hear the word of the Lord and turn away. Let's go. Second Peter two verse twenty. It says, "For if after they have escaped the defilement of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled." in them and are overcome the last state has become worse than the first for if they would be better for it would be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn away from the holy commandment handed on to them it has happened to them according to the true proverb a dog returns to its own vomit and a sow after washing returns to the wallowing in its mire now Saul was afraid of David this is Saul is a picture of someone who became apostate Saul turned away from God and now began to persecute you see, this is what's happening now. Have you noticed it? The Christians that are living by the righteous standard of the Bible are being persecuted by those who say the Bible is all about love. And they're calling some Christians haters. They say we are haters because we are judgmental. We are harsh. We are trying to condemn others. This is the same situation here between David and Saul. Saul has a traveling and he is destroying David. David is being persecuted by Saul. He says the Lord was with him but had departed from him. It says, an evil spirit of the Lord followed Saul. But David, the psalmist, used his harp, his harp to play in the presence of the Lord. So David is the psalmist. David is the minstrel. The word psalmist means to bring forth light. So David is bringing forth the light from the presence of the Holy Spirit now to minister to Saul because Saul has departed from the presence of the Lord. Let no one deceive you. It will not come. This is speaking of the mark of the beast the man of sin so 
this period of time here is also indicative of what's going to happen next. Prophetically, we can make an announcement. We know that the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist is already here. But we know that the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, is about to be revealed. We know that humanity is on a ticking, ticking time clock. Humanity is on the watch. Let no man deceive you. Apostasy is here. The man of sin is about to be revealed. Now let's look at national apostasy. Uh, this is Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. I give you time to look at some of the verses. And after these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the whole of every foal spirit every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies and I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her place so wherever you are if you are living in this particular country it says, 
come out of her my people so God's people the remnant are in this particular place this particular country so this particular country is an apostate country they have committed so much abomination in the sight of the Lord that God begins to judge this country with plagues be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues now I leave you to figure out who mystery Babylon is but Babylon the Great has fallen and has become the habitation of devils. Because it's drunk the wine and the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth, these are leaders of different countries, the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Have you noticed how influential some countries are? That they can influence other countries to take certain political decisions even without the will of the people? Without going to the people to vote? To ask them without even going to parliament for a parliamentary decision to be taken? They will follow the influence of particular countries just because of the relationship that the country share. Mm. So the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So this is a rich country. This is a wealthy country. It says, and I heard, this is the angel, not me speaking. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her my people so god's people are in this country but he says come out of her that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues so the judgment of God on this particular country is that it will be inflicted with plagues for her sins have reached up unto heaven and God has remembered her iniquities reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her according to her works. You remember in Revelation chapter, I think, 7 to 9, we we'll talk about the seven churches. Next week, we're going to focus on the apostasy of churches, where the seven churches were judged. So here he's judging the nation and he judged them why according to their works here he's judging the country according to her works how much if you remember one of the church is a parallel here some of the churches were very wealthy some of the churches had disobeyed god the church in sardis then there's the church of pergamon and all of these churches were judged similarly now the nations are being judged are you seeing the parallel verse 7 how much she has glorified herself and live deliciously so much torment and sorrow gave give gave her for she slept 
For she said in her heart, I sit a queen and a widow, and she sees no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. So the devastation on this country is going to be swift. Debt and mourning, debt and mourning, and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. This could be a nuclear war. This could be an attack of an enemy upon this nation. It could be, it could be China attacking America. It could be Russia attacking America. I don't know. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Debt and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Now let's go back to, um, gosh, that prophet, um, I remember him, uh, Nineveh. Uh, Jonah. When Jonah went to Nineveh, now if you do a historical um, search on the city of Nineveh, Nineveh was destroyed even after Jonah went to the city. Uh, Nineveh is really modern day Iraq, but the actual city Nineveh does not exist anymore. If you look on the map, you will not see Nineveh because it was ultimately destroyed after God sent Jonah to the city of Nineveh. For people who think that there is a different level of judgment on the Old Testament and the New Testament, I think those people have misunderstood their Bible. I'm reading from the New Testament. This is the book of Revelation. But I'm drawing a parallel with what happened to Nineveh. Now you can do the research for yourself. I've done it. After God sent Jonah to Nineveh, Nineveh was ultimately destroyed. Yes, the king did repent. And the people in Nineveh did repent. But they continued in their abomination unto the Lord. And the city was ultimately destroyed. Don't take my word for it. You can do the research yourself. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. This is scary. For strong is the Lord who judgeth her. Verse 9. This is a clue here. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication now this is this is personification this is not literal fornication so it means that there is a relationship between the kings of the earth with this particular country that the, this country will lead other countries into sin now if you remember the book of james the book of james talks about adultery with the world it says he who loves the world more than you love God has committed an adultery with the world so an apostasy relationship exists between the person who loves the world and ultimately hates God so loving the world and being intimate with the world is to have a relationship of fornication so your relationship is with God your intimate relationship should be with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. But if your love relationship is to the world, you are essentially committing fornication. The prophet Jeremiah used a very similar language when he says, Judah had committed adultery and that Israel likewise has lifted up her dress. You might remember that language by the prophet Jeremiah. This is a similar language here that the apostle John is using. The kings of the earth 
who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. So that means that these kings of the earth obtain great wealth. Oh, from partnering with this particular country, from having a relationship with this particular country. It says, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when she shall see the smoke of her burning so this country is going to be decimated why because of her national apostasy god shall bring this country under judgment come out of her my people judgment is coming to your country If you read your Bible, you know who Mr. Babylon is. Mm. Mm. So national apostasy is a very dangerous place to be. Anyone there who is a body and Christian will suffer great persecution. It's amazing how the answer is in the Bible. It says, come out of her, my people. To, to avoid personal apostasy, it says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not any unclean thing and I will receive you. So there is a personal relationship and there is a personal apostasy that can take place. Here ends the reading of his word. I'm just a messenger doing what I was told to do. Now, if you want to read through the other texts, or find the other message that we did on personal apostasy then you can certainly find them in YouTube on the Kingdom Evangelism UK but the object of this is that people will come into an alignment in these last days to make a commitment to follow Jesus Christ this is not to condemn anyone but this is for us to align ourselves it's amazing how accurate the Bible is. If we just read it, the message is very clear. These are the last days. And I think it's from this that we will have a personal, well, not a personal, a national revival from the remnant church those who stand up for Jesus those who stand up for fundamental Christian beliefs now next week when we look at church apostasy you might be shocked some things that are happening in the church I'm not talking about things that you know I'm talking about the things which are happening on a level that is very clear that apostasy has taken place I'm talking about where churches have completely split I'm not talking about church scandals I'm talking about where churches have completely split because of doctrinal differences based upon the Bible the Holy Spirit spoke to me last month Ooh, about the Church of England he gave me a direct word for the Church of England I'm gonna save that until next week
Hmm. Father, we thank you for your word. Sanctify your word because your word is true. May your word be fulfilled in our hearts today. you are blessed by the word of the Lord today. Thus said the word of the Lord. Just be the messenger. Thank you very much for tuning in to Kingdom Evangelism today. Maybe you've heard this message for the very first time and you have never said yes to Jesus Christ. Why don't you join us in praying this prayer? Oops. Thank you for tuning in to Kingdom Evangelism UK. May the Lord bless you and keep you.
Heavenly Father, your word says that if I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. I that I have sinned against you. I repent of my sins. Wash me with your, your blood. I confess that you are my Redeemer. I boldly accept that you are now, now Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Thank, you Thank you very much for tuning in to Kingdom Evangelism UK. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. Father, we declare today that we don't need to be apostate. We can walk into a right relationship with you. We thank you that the love of God will constrain us and the love of God will draw us into your presence and draw us into a right relationship with you. Father, we thank you that you are God and that you are God alone. Let your name be praised. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Bye bye. Let's end with worship. Hmm? Why not end with some worship?
Thank you for tuning in to Kingdom Evangelism UK. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord may his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace.